Jennifer Ocker, Humor, Seriously, Why Humor is a Secret Weapon in Business and Life, and How Anyone Can Harness It. Even You. In Humor, Seriously, author Jennifer Ocker explores the importance and impact of humor in our lives and workplaces. As people move through their 20s, laughter and humor tend to decrease significantly. This book reveals how humor can positively affect our physical and emotional health, improve our creativity and ability to connect with others, and even enhance our leadership skills. You'll discover different styles of humor and learn how to become more approachable through it. Read on to explore the science behind laughter, understand comedy styles, and discover the tools and strategies to make humor a powerful force in your life and career. Laugh More, Life Better This book discusses the importance of humor in our lives and how we can learn to be funny even if we think we're not. The lack of levity in our lives and workplaces is causing us to miss out on the benefits of laughter, which include improved physical and emotional health. Laughter is a skill that can be learned and developed over time and is like exercising, meditating, and having sex all at once. The book presents scientific evidence that supports the idea that laughter is the best medicine and encourages readers to bring more humor into their lives and their work. Finding Your Sense of Humor Discover your comedic style and have fun at work. The journey to discovering your humor style begins with understanding the four types of humor, stand-ups, magnets, sweethearts, and snipers. Stand-ups use edgy humor and are thick-skinned, while magnets keep things positive and silly. Sweethearts use subtle teasing, and snipers are sarcastic and aggressive. However, it's crucial to know when to use these styles appropriately. Inappropriate humor can harm relationships, while using the right style can make people feel good and approachable. Thus, one should not stress out if they can't figure out their comedic style. The workplace can be a breeding ground for humor, leading to increased rapport and stress relief. Hence, exploring humor at work is essential, and it should stem naturally. Understanding how to infuse humor into the organization's culture helps reduce workplace stress, encourage creativity, and create a welcoming environment. Finding your comedic voice involves being authentic, humor in the workplace shouldn't be forced. One can improve their sense of humor by finding the right people and community, being open, and being willing to learn and adapt. Therefore, the bottom line is that everyone can leverage humor, but it begins with discovering their comedic style and knowing the appropriateness of its use. The Art of Being Funny The book reveals that humor is usually derived from the truth and absurdities of the world around us. The authors share insights from professionals who learn to tap into their own emotions to create moments of shared levity. They advise being cautious with anger and pain, but share what is contrasting or incongruent about oneself and life instead. By doing so, people can avoid being the unapproachable big boss and become a more relatable human being. With these tips, the book teaches readers how to master the art of being funny. Mastering Humor Discover how to enhance humor through exaggeration, specificity, analogies, and the rule of three with insights from professional improvisers and coaches from Second City and the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. Humor is not just about telling a funny story. It requires a set of tools to make an audience laugh, such as exaggeration, specificity, analogies, and the rule of three. These tools were gathered from interviews with professional improvisers and coaches who offer insights on how to get from idea to punchline. Exaggeration is the first tool to use, taking a life event and embellishing it to surprise the listener. Surprise comes from saying something unexpected, as exemplified by John Mulaney's quip about wearing a sweater and corduroy pants to a massage. The listener may have expected Mulaney to say he undressed rather than put on more clothes, making the joke funnier. The second tool is specificity, which uses precise and vivid language to create a relatable mental image for the listener. By describing Mulaney's corduroy pants as thick, made for winter, and absurd attire during a massage, the audience creates a funny mental image. Using analogies, the third tool, 
can be effective in highlighting how absurd something is by comparing it to something equally outrageous. Analogies require a solid base of personal observation and specificity to help the audience understand the connection. When Hassan Minhaj compares his conversations with his father to an M. Night Shyamalan movie, he's pointing out how tedious and unfulfilling they can be, much like one of Shyamalan's films. By creating a relatable connection, the analogy becomes funny. The final tool is the rule of three, a simple but effective way to subvert expectations and create surprise. By listing two expected things and then adding an unexpected third element, a laugh line can be created. Amy Schumer's joke about becoming rich, famous, and humble wouldn't work without establishing the pattern first, making the audience anticipate something different before ending with, humble. To be humorous, one must have a solid base of personal observation, use specificity and vivid language to create a mental image, use analogies, when appropriate, to create relatable connections, and use the rule of three to subvert expectations. With these simple tools from professional improvisers and coaches at places like Second City and the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, humor can be more accessible and effectively used. Spontaneous Humor, a Guide Humor is a powerful tool for building connections and fostering creativity, but not everyone has the luxury of spending months and years honing their comedic skills. So how can you be funny on the spot? Start by knowing your go-to stories and being observant of your surroundings. Look for what's funny right now, to this group only. Creating safe spaces for others to explore their funny sides is also a great way to build lasting connections while encouraging mental gymnastics. Whether you're being strategic or spontaneous, humor can lead to innovative and visionary ideas. Learn how to appropriately use humor in the next part. Humor Management Effective use of humor in the workplace. Humor is subjective and can vary depending on various factors, including one's upbringing, experiences, and political views. Therefore, knowing how to handle different ideas of humor in the workplace is crucial. The key is to use humor responsibly and with sensitivity, empathy, and hilarity, while keeping cultural differences and the potential of offending anyone in mind. The appropriateness of a joke can be determined by removing the humor and examining the truth behind it. If it's inappropriate without the humor, then it's an inappropriate joke. Professor and Labura of Columbia College Chicago's Spectrum of Truth, Pain, and Distance is an important concept to consider. The joke's appropriateness depends on how close it hits home, if you have enough experience with the topic and if you feel close enough to the group to make the jokes. It's not always possible to know how everyone will react, but owning up to your mistakes and being vulnerable can make a significant impact. Sarah Blakely, founder and CEO of Spanx, holds regular company-wide Oops meetings, where she addresses recent mistakes she's made, plays music that fits the situation, and encourages employees to join her in dancing along. The power of acknowledging mistakes is that it fosters a safer environment to make mistakes, empowering the team to innovate and try new things. Connecting through authenticity The importance of embracing your personality to establish genuine connections in both personal and professional communication is the central message of this summary. The book's summary teaches that communicating in stiff, formal language without any personal touch leaves little room for connection. Emails and face-to-face -face conversations are opportunities for real and authentic connections. Asking about personal interests and experiences and sharing personal stories can help to make an impression, leaving a lasting impact on the person you communicate with. The summary highlights the significance of first impressions and how they can influence your relationship with colleagues or clients. In today's digital age, online presence and profiles are also crucial for creating a good first impression. Job seekers should make sure their online profile reflects their personality. Catchy and lighthearted bio descriptions along with achievements can intrigue potential employers. The book summary cites an example of Steve, whose witty and humorous bio helped him stand out as a candidate and ultimately got him an interview. In essence, the book emphasizes the importance of embracing personality and authenticity to connect on a more genuine level, both in personal and professional communication. Instead of strict formality, 
communicating with a more relaxed attitude can help establish deeper and stronger connections. Leaders, Humor, and Trust Leaders who utilize humor can build trust, motivate employees, and create a positive work environment despite a general lack of trust in leadership. Gone are the days of leadership defined by intelligence, bravery, moral superiority, and cunning resolve. The aftermath of wars, nuclear disasters, financial crises, and more has resulted in a lack of trust in our leaders. A Harvard Business School study found that 58% of employees trust a stranger more than their own boss. This lack of trust affects productivity and causes problems in the workplace. However, companies that maintain a high-trust environment are thriving. Leaders who incorporate humor into their leadership style can better unite, persuade, and motivate their teams. Humor in business can improve leadership power, not in terms of power over people but in controlling how people view you and how they remember you. Leaders set the tone, and showcasing humor or understanding of humor can build trust and support. Playing along with others enjoying moments of levity demonstrates an approachable leadership style. Finding balance between authority and approachability is key, and self-deprecating humor or humble moments can help with that. Humor creates bonds and a positive work environment that forms in moments of shared mirth can last much longer than awkward team-building activities. Employees want to feel safe, seen, and heard, and even unexpected moments of playful praise can be more effective than official ones because they feel authentic. As a leader, knowing when to step back and finding and supporting a charismatic coworker can help build a safe and fun space in the workplace. Humor can build trust, motivate employees, and create a positive work environment despite a general lack of trust in leadership. In conclusion, humor, seriously, underscores the importance of humor in our lives, especially in the workplace. Jennifer Ocker shows that the effective use of humor can positively influence our physical and emotional health, enhance our creativity and interpersonal relationships, and even make us better leaders. By understanding different humor styles, developing appropriate jokes and stories, and building a supportive environment, anyone can harness the power of humor to improve their personal and professional lives. So, whether you think you're funny or not, remember it's about being real, approachable, and adaptable, and humor can help you achieve just that.